What's up folks? Let's talk about a really weird build that came about as a result of one of my mods seeing a request feature on Path of Building for overriding the amount of trauma stacks the complex trauma bone shatter can have. And that's the origin point of this build, this idea, and where we kind of started building from. So as you can see from the gameplay, it is a trauma stacker. You have a little bit of a slow ramp to it. And then, of course, as you get more trauma, you get more damage and thus things start dying faster. Also in this build, you start getting more speed from the soul ascension gloves. You start getting attack speed from getting your frenzies, getting your onslaughts, all that stuff uh, going into the setup. You kind of snowball faster and faster, get bigger and bigger and start doing more and more damage as you would with most trauma stacking builds. But we do have the ability to sustain a very high trauma stack indeed if we were to pick up something like a acceleration shrine here and then just smash our way into a harpy pack and just stand there swinging about. We're going to go up to 110, 120 friends, uh, traumas pretty quickly. The biggest I've seen so far is I got to swing on Shaper for just no stop in at all. Got to 157 stacks, survived it just fine, so that's pretty cool on that part. But the reality is that we're not the ones doing damage. We may be swinging the axe, but the axe is not actually doing any damage at all. We're basically doing 300k ourselves. Our damage is being done by the Bone Shatter of Complex Trauma Mirage Warriors from General's Cry. I'll go into all the details when I'm, I'm showing the gems in a little bit, but it's a very interesting playstyle where you're kind of being the buff for your allies, the Mirage Warriors and they're using your trauma stacks rather than their own to attack with, so if you can get a lot of trauma, you can make Bone Shutter of Complex Trauma have a massive more multiplier on it. Something like right now, let's say I have 50 trauma, which is what I have the pub set to, uh, it gives me about 1700% more damage on the Bone Shatter minions, and they're doing some chunky hits. This has been able to do basically T-17s, do some Ubering, whatever I've thrown it at. It's not a all-around build. It's not going to do like back to basics t 17 stuff like that. That is a little bit overkill for the level of investment required. And I didn't really want to care about any of that stuff. But the build was so fun to play that I ended up getting it to 98 and actually doing more investment that I expected to do, but you don't have to go that far. It was just a lot of fun to really get to, to mid-max this build and uh, kind of push it to what is maybe the limit of it. I, there, there might be more you can do with it, but I'm not entirely sure. Though it's been really fun, so you know what? I, I do recommend it as a setup. Let's go over that setup. So what are we doing? We are doing Frenzy of Onslaught or Normal Frenzy. It doesn't matter which one. That is linked to trauma, so that that's how we generate our trauma stacks. That trauma is also, or that frenzy is also linked to cast on crit. Desecrate, because we need a way to generate a lot of corpses whenever we're bouncing from pack to pack. Uh, I could use corpse walker boots, I could use uh, cast on damage de taken desecrate. I tried both of those, they just don't feel as good as just a nice cast on crit desecrate to put corpses on the ground as quickly as possible, and basically the moment you jump into a pack, you hit once, corpses are on the ground, Mirage Warriors will pop up out of those corpses. That's then linked to just faster attacks and increased duration to make sure that we can stack as much trauma as we can and attack as fast as we can to get as many traumas as possible. From there, we have a Bone Shatter of Complex Trauma linked to General's Cry, Call to Arms. Call to Arms is making it so we automate that cry, so it's going to constantly go off every single time. That's where the corpses are going to be then used from, from General's Cry to spawn the Bone Shatter of Complex Trauma minions. Bone Shatter of Complex Trauma is specifically a uh, transfigured quality Bone Shatter that does more damage per trauma but has a trauma maximum on the skill gym itself of 10 traumas. When you hit with 10 traumas, you lose all your trauma. In this case, however, since we're the ones stacking the trauma, we as a, the character never lose our trauma stack because our Bone Shatter of Complex Trauma Mirage Warriors are the ones that are attacking. So when they attack that one time that they get to attack, they will attack with a full trauma stack 
and then lose it, but they only attack once anyway, so it doesn't matter if they lose it after the first hit. So, by stacking trauma ourselves, we can really go hard into it, get a lot of trauma, and then have them kind of do that one attack, and then resummon them and do that one attack, and so on and so forth. So that repeats indefinitely, and from there, we actually gave it enhance as a support. The reason we give it enhance as a support is because the quality on it is more damage per trauma. So by giving it more quality, well, we give it more trauma stacks, and when you're going 50, 60, 70, 100 trauma stacks, that's a lot of more multiplier, and it also in in boosts up the other things that are in here. So general uh, Call to Arms gets this cooldown and all that stuff lowered. General's Cry, same thing. We get more Mirage Warriors, so we have four Mirage Warriors, which means that we have to make sure that the cooldown of General's Cry is at the right value to make it so that it spawns enough mirage warriors we don't overwrite them they all get to attack and then we spawn again at the right time so by doing this we have to generals cry every 2.2 ish seconds the first mirage warrior spawns at 0.3 seconds and then every subsequent one after that is 0.2 seconds so 0.3 times whatever amount you have or 0.2 times one minus so in my case um, i have nine mirage warriors so that's eight times 0.2 plus 0.3 for that first one to spawn, and then whatever your attack timing is, which in my case is about 0.3, which gives me a cooldown of 2.2, uh, roughly about where it is. There's a whole lot of information on General's Cry out there if you want to like look into that. Uh, the wiki has some, the reds have some. I just know that for this setup, after testing, we got 2.2, and that feels pretty good. I'm not like a giant, massive knowledge base on General's Cry, so... I, I just kind of brute forced it until it felt like everything was getting an attack in and then disappearing and that's what I did. From there, we got increased crit damage because we're crits and of course endurance charge on melee stun becomes the powerhouse for this build as a result of going very deep into it and getting ourselves all these sweet sweet charges because we got 11 brutal charges, 11 endurance charges. So of course endurance charge on melee stun and ended up being the go-to there. And it's kind of a weird one because I don't do any kind of penetrations. I don't do much in terms of other uh, elemental weaknesses, anything like that. I just kind of let the attack weapon do its thing and that is an axe of elemental damages fire cold lightning crit attack speed in the graveyard is really easy to craft this cost me about a divine to make exactly as it is um, it they're super cheap to craft they're super super uh, straightforward just do some elemental and attack and crit and you're, you're good to go I really really cheap axes to make elemental axes very nice uh, and then just slap it on with a build like this and do some damage with it so that's the that's the kind of the the way that this works and the what the reason we're stocking so much quality even using an ashes on an attack build because the quality is so important we get so much from trauma we get so much from the extra mirage warriors being spawned so we don't have to war cry as often they get more attacks in um, the the less times you have to war cry the more that point two per subsequent summon helps you so we went a lot with ashes and the quality Fellow Flows is the anoint because we needed some more accuracy, more crit, all that good stuff as you would expect in the build. Of course, we're using the old Relikesh and Patience's th booties because they are very nice for this setup when we are not really walking anywhere. As you can tell, I also have vines on me because I kind of went overkill. So when I start moving, I am slow. I am the juggernaut. It takes me quite a while to, to ramp up and start walking, but I never really walk anywhere after a couple frenzies couple stacks of the soul eater i get to bounce around really really quickly with leap slam and that's just kind of how i'm moving anywhere so i figured if we're gonna not have any movement speed we might as well go all the way into movement speed and just drop all of it off the tree completely and just walk around everywhere with leap slam and it works just fine for me i know it's not going to be everyone's play style but it works for me and so that's what i ended up doing from there because we have uh we have brutal we have endurance frenzy and power charges taken care of with the boots might as well go Arn's Anguish and get ourselves Brutal Charges as well. So instead of getting Endurance Charges, we gain Brutal Charges. On this setup, that's 11 Brutal Charges, so that's 33% 33 chance to deal triple damage. And then some of you are going, wait a second, why are you doing triple and double damage? So the I have a 33% chance to, if I understand this correctly, do triple damage. Of the remaining 67% chance, 
I have then, with the Grasping Vines, a 20% chance of that 67 to do 13% double damage. So I have a 33% chance to do triple damage, 13% chance to do double damage, and the rest is normal damage. It's a weird thing. We looked up some mark post on it, and I, I think we understood it correctly. It's still kind of worth it in this build. Mostly for me, it's that less damage taken that I'm using for the Grasping Vines for, just to give myself more defensive layers in the build, because I don't have a lot of HP, as you can tell from the 3000 HP that I do have, so I needed as much less damage taken as possible to make it feel very, very thick. Of course, when you are using trauma and you're smacking yourself in the face, divine flesh and being a juggernaut for the untiring means you have a massive regen pool. So as long as you don't get one shot, you're basically going to regenerate the entire pool right away multiple times a second. Combo is very strong, so even a little bit of life and a little bit of ES with this combo means I do have, you know, overall 4000 HP but that regens very quickly because we have corrupting soul we're taking it on both of the pools at once so we kind of buffer our regen even more from that combo very very powerful and most most of the time trauma stackers do use this kind of combo of divine shield corrupting soul untiring very very thick very good for setups like this and it was recommended and i used it and i am i'm definitely converted it is very very good for that from there, like I said, we are using the Soul Ascensions. Uh, these are the ones that give you Soul Eater, and so basically whenever you hit a rare or unique, you uh, get yourself to be really, really attack speed fast. Faster attack speed means more trauma, more regen from hitting yourself with more trauma, and just overall ramping things up. Speaking of hitting yourself with the trauma, you may have to change what level of trauma you're using depending on what you have in the build. So I was able to go to level 20 trauma once I had a lot of the endurance charges. I went unrelenting. On top of it, I specced into, you know, the additional physical damage reduction from the Soul of Growth Call. And I was able to kind of slowly work it way upwards so that I get more and more regen from having a bigger and bigger trauma hit on myself. At one point in time, I was using a level 1 trauma. At one point, I was using a level 11. Just depending on where I was in the build, what was going on, the trauma level may vary. But for you, it doesn't really matter because the trauma level itself doesn't matter for the bone shatter complex trauma minions in terms of their damage all it matters is how much life re healing and regeneration you are getting from the untiring divine shield combo so this is mostly for recovery not damage use whatever level you can survive at when you start chunking yourself down when you hit too hard just go ahead and level it down or swap out a new one and you'll be good to go on that from there Helmet is very, very basic. We got some life, we got some fizz fire. I need it in somewhere. I need us a bit of life regeneration rate. Why not? One resist and fizz is, uh, physical damage recoup is life with fizz is fire again, just to give myself a little bit more buffer. I do have a, quite a lot of armor and stuff. When I'm doing this, I have 133k armor. I got taste of hate going on in there. Got some all resist going on, uh, our max all resist going on. We got capped on the chaos resist and we just stand around doing doing the big thick tanking using things like unbreakable and then also specking into this one here for armor also applies the chaos damage hits so we get both of those really nice effective hp pool as a result of that with that big healing so this is fire to to mitigate a little bit more make our armor go a little bit farther so we take smaller hits against our fizz uh, but overall yeah, some of this stuff could be unnecessary but i i liked it so i i kept with it there um same thing here just more armor physical damage reduction as you would assume now you'll notice that i am wearing a ring of calandra these are like one or two divines this league they're super super cheap and that's because i went ahead and went ham on a biscuit which i never do i never go this hard on anything and i got myself a plus one max endurance charge ring just because it was really fun to play this build these were like 30 divine for the base smashed it with essences landed some resistances that i needed for some pieces in the thing got a life roll got a wed roll and put on a minus meta cost just to do that and then of course i mirrored it because i have this ring so now i have two of these on and that's where i'm getting the 11 brutal charges from otherwise i just have nine honestly that's more than plenty for the build this was just me wanting to see how how stupid i can make the build and it worked out really well uh, in terms of crafting the base was expensive and so was the craft but 
Uh, sometimes you gotta go a little bit more ham on builds. I also picked up a plus one socketed brass dome. Completely unnecessary. That was just because there was one more breakpoint I get to by having a level four enhance. I could then push the bone shatter higher to go to 36 or 37 trauma. Uh, in this case, I went for the 21 Bone Shatter because that was giving me more damage than a 37 was, at least according to pubs. So I was going to go for 21, 23, but I failed all my attempts. So I got a 21, 20. I also had a 20, 23, but that was weaker pub things. Who knows? Magic math things that happen in the background. I just went with the one that had a bigger damage number. From there, the, it also helps for the build to get Chaos Resist from a Parandus Pact. This is where I just slapped it down because I have wanted to, you know, somehow get Chaos Resist in this when I'm wearing this many uniques. It's kind of difficult. So that covers out most of my Chaos Resist. If I take it out, I go to 20. Here I have 75 or 80 in total. So that's very good for that socket there. And otherwise, it's a weird kind of tree that traveled around oddly down to here rather than through here because I needed certain things in certain places and I just kind of had to work with it. Wanting to not get rid of a bunch of my nodes for Corrupted Soul had to come through here. Then I tried to get some good stuff here, which kind of worked out. I have a better armor one over here, but I wasn't ending. I didn't end up going towards Constitution, so I just kind of left that one floating there. Got some elemental stuff. I'm using the hits treat enemy monsters as inverted because I'm not using any kind of elemental weakness, anything like that. I just have normal assassin's mark in this setup. Uh, from there, if we've got a forbidden flame, forbidden flesh combo that lets us steal Warbringer. Warbringer is very, very powerful for this build. Uh, it's very expensive, but it is also very powerful. So it is exerted attacks deal 50% more attack damage if war cry is sacrificed rage recently. And recently is pretty much always on this build because you gain a little bit of rage, lose a little bit of rage, gain a little bit of rage, lose a little bit of rage every single time you war cry. And so that gives you 50% more attack damage on the general's cry minions because those are counted as exerted attacks, which is very, very nice for the setup as well. And from there, we got ourselves a Watcher's Eye for minus mana cost. I was really running into a problem with mana cost on this build, and that's one of the reasons I have this one and the recoup of mana. I actually ended up being Battle Ruse spec at one point to try to solve this before I could buy this Watcher's Eye. Minus 8 here, minus 10 there means that I don't have a mana cost on my Frenzy, and it means I can reserve all the way down to where I am now. Before that, I had a bit of difficulty reserving and attacking and all that stuff with everything popping off and being automated as a result of the the auras I'm using being precision, vitality, determination. Kind of takes up this entire pool, even with the Enlightened 4. I don't have a whole lot of reservations here, I just have this node here, and that's that was enough to, to make it work. Um, I don't have a mana reservation on this build as far as I know. No, I don't. Okay, I had to check real quick. I don't remember what spec I was in anymore. Um, so you could get by if you had a mana reservation, grab Battle Ruse. You don't need this kind of Watcher Eye, but then you'd have to drop a little bit of other points, maybe get accuracy somewhere else. It's all doable. It's all possible in that regard. From there, Leap Slam, Berserk, Faster Attacks, Clarity. Clarity is level one just because it's the minus mana cost for having the Watcher's Eye in. And we do move everywhere with Leaf Slam, and of course Berserk is pretty much all the time up because we just swing, swing, swing. Our War Cries go up and down, Berserk goes up and down, Rage goes up and down. It's all good. I just basically spam Q. I think it's up, let's say, 70% of the time. Not 100%, but close enough for me where now it's down and then I can pop it back on and so on and so forth. It's been how I've been running Berserk in the build, so another less damage taken from there. Very, very nice indeed. And then the final thing is cast on damage taken. Hydrosphere was there. I for, I had a reason for this being there, but I don't remember what it is anymore. Um, you could probably ignore that. I, I just put it in. I think it was pub said it's more damage and I had one more socket. So I said, uh, all right, whatever. We'll do cast on damage taken hydro, Hydrosphere and slapped it in the build. Um, Blood Rage for more attack speed and as, a, Assassin's Mark. You'll notice I do not have any totems in the build. Uh, totems just felt like crap. Uh, putting totem down, putting... Making sure that they were up for fights, making sure that they they, they kind of survived and all that stuff was going to take more investment than it, I wanted to put into the build. So literally running Blood Rage just made the build feel better. 
I was I had faster attacks. I was able to get in, uh, get my charges ramped up. I didn't have to worry about positioning or anything like that. I would just leap slam onto the face of a boss, swing, 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 swing. Things would spawn, hit it really hard, and I'd just keep going. So I just I just forgo totems completely in this build. I, it just didn't matter. Uh, if you want to put totems in, if you want to make DPS number go higher, by all means. Totems just suck to play, so I, I just didn't put totems down. I was doing plenty of damage already. When it comes to damage, I actually don't know how much I do. This is saying 20 million hit DPS with this, but I can do what seems to be way more than that because shapers and things like that just absolutely disappear. Um, so what the damage actually is, I do not know. It could be from 20 to 60 million. Uh uh, if someone knows General's Cry better than I do, by all means, put it in the comments below, because, um, yeah, I, I, I don't know. Uh, and then if we're looking, actually looking at the pub, because I wasn't actually looking at the pub a second ago, um, when I showed Warbringer, which is great, uh, but War, I, I, I can still explain Warbringer without having to show it on screen. Um, we do have the 50 trauma stack down here. I had to manually calculate that by being 1700% more damage. And of course, Brandis pack has to be manually added in as well, because that just doesn't work within pub right now. Because this trauma stack here is limited to 10. It's when the highest trauma for Bone Shatter of Complex Trauma goes away. If I put 10 in here, that's not going to be indicative of my actual damage. So I have to put in a false 50 trauma stack count by basically taking the amount of trauma stacks I have, multiplying by 36 more damage per trauma, and just putting that in the config down here. So if you're wondering where this number comes from, it's just trauma stacks times 36. Uh, or whatever trauma amount you have, and then, then you have to put that in manually because, once again, this whole build started because somebody wanted to override this max trauma stacks for this spill skill specifically as a result of being able to do it this way. And it's been a whole lot of fun to mess around with and do. So I highly recommend this is just like a weird setup if somebody wants to try a different style of melee to go in and see see what's going on and see how, how it feels, what it does, all that stuff. But, um, I also don't know what this build is going to look like in future leagues where it, it, it might just not be this, this, this system of like overriding the bone shatter or complex trauma, trauma stack by making a mirage wars. This could just be unintended. Like this could just be something that's not supposed to be happening, not supposed to work. And this build might not exist if they patch it out. So if you want to give it a shot, uh, do it while you can, maybe. I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what to say about that. It's a really fun build. I somehow got 98 on it by just doing Harbringers. Um, I usually stop at like 96. Uh, I got 98. I was just having too much fun blasting Harbing Harbringers with it and uh, got some fracturing ore pops and stuff like that to happen. Um, it, it was just a good time. It was just a good build. I did some T17s. T17s still suck. Um, so if you want to do C-17s, this can do them. I don't recommend it for back to basics T-17s, but hey, you do you. And uh, yeah, next video is on Glacial Cascade Mines. Yes, somehow we're in the year 2012 again. Oh well, good times. I very much enjoyed this build. Hope you do as well. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.